Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we're going through our EKG coding reference guide and we're all the way at part eight, which is down here, okay, in the clinical disorders. So if you have your packet, your uh, pamphlet, your small book, you can go through it and find us where we're at there. If not, and you want online access, all you have to do is go to this link here and enter um, this URL, okay? You'll enter your email, click submit, and from there, you'll get an email with a link, and on that link, you'll click it, and you'll have direct access, okay? So free access there, and you'll get the EKG coding reference guide where we go through all different features of the EKG, and essentially, this is how we code EKGs uh, in the EKG lab, okay? So if patient gets an EKG recorded, okay, then it comes to the computer system, the tech overreads it, and then a physician uh, ensures the code is correct. So these are the different codes we use, okay? If you're studying for your cardiology boards, this is the type of coding you would use on the boards to differentiate and when you're actually putting the codes. So in part eight, we're going to look at Brugada syndrome in this lecture, okay? And Brugada syndrome is one of the clinical disorders that you want to be aware of. It has an association with sudden cardiac death, so that's another feature that we want to look out for. Now, if you're interested in more comprehensive, detailed learning, if you're just a beginning, or if you want to get to an advanced level, you can check out our EKG course here at www.ekg.md, okay? And then click on the EKG course, and from there, you'll be able, if you get the course, have access to our videos. While there's almost, you know, over 400 on YouTube, these ones are actually designed specifically for the, for, for the course to take you from beginning to end as an advanced interpreter. Okay, so check that out. You get calipers, you get a number of books, and everything that goes along with it. Anyways, let's look at Brugada syndrome in this lecture. So Brugada syndrome, there are a few features I want you to look out for. Well, first of all, I want you to realize that there's we're looking at leads V1 through V3. So V1 through V3 are the leads we're focusing on, okay? And what we're looking for is considered a pseudo right bundle branch block pattern, and you'll have ST elevation in those leads, okay? So pseudo right bundle branch, meaning that it looks, it appears like a right bundle branch. Remember, in these leads, uh, V1 through V2 and maybe up to V3, we may see a pattern like this, which we call an RSR prime or that rabbit ears. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And what we're seeing is that we don't see this pattern, but it looks like it. And that's because the ST segment is elevated. Okay. You have that high takeoff and we'll look at that um, in shortly here. Okay. So this is a pseudo right bundle branch block pattern, appears as one with um, concomitant ST elevation in those leads. Now there's three different types, okay? Three different types. So I want you to focus. Here's lead V1, V2, and V3. This is a standard 12 lead EKG I'm showing you, okay? Here's V1 down here in one of our rhythm strips, okay? So remember, over here on the right side are precordial leads and the left side are limb leads. And we're looking at these right precordial leads is where we're gonna look for these findings. Okay, so we want to differentiate three different types. And I've taken a little bit out of our book to show you um, the three different types. So type one, what we're gonna see is an elevated ST segment that has a descending and upward convex uh, co cove type inverted T wave, okay? So what does that mean? Okay, so look right here. So here's type one, and what you're seeing is in a, so look how I label them, A, B, C, D. In A, you have the J point elevation. And remember, J point is essentially the end portion of your QRS complex. So that's what we call the J point. So J point elevation is essentially ST segment elevation, where it begins, the end of our QRS complex. We were looking for that, okay? So that's the J point. So notice that in type one, it's elevated, okay? And in this case, it should be greater than two millimeters, 
okay it has we have that coved type stt wave segment okay and that's b so notice it's coved meaning it has that morphology okay and then you have a descending terminal st segment elevation okay so what does that mean so you have that descending terminal meaning it's coming down and it's going past the baseline and you're having this inverted t wave okay so notice a negative t wave or inverted so essentially that's what you're looking for okay and you may see that when as we go through the other types you'll see why the differences play a role okay and this type one is probably the most unique type two and three tend to be a little similar in their morphology okay so again elevated j point at least two millimeters above the baseline okay and that's what that red marker is showing here so from top to bottom is two millimeters and again you want to see that cove type st segment descending terminal st elevation or of that and then into a negative uh, t wave going down okay so that's type one hopefully that makes sense so type two is where again we have j point elevation above two millimeters okay so above two millimeters and essentially I just covered that up but above two millimeters in this one okay and notice it's the same in type three so again type one and type two and type three j point elevation is present in all of them and it has to be at least two millimeters okay now where type two and three differ from type one is that morphology of the st to a segment okay so notice it is saddleback in both uh, type two and type three where it was coved type in here and so what do we mean by the saddleback okay well in the saddleback what we have is a kind of dip so it goes up imagine you have your st segment imagine this is a okay and then it's going to dip a little bit and then come back up like that okay this being your t wave this again is your j point right there and notice how that has a dip in it okay so it's coming down and dips under and what we see in type 2 is that dip okay imagine that you have a baseline here this dipping portion which we call the saddleback morphology has an st segment so it's still elevated more than or at least one millimeter above the baseline okay so that portion here i'll label it in red is at least one millimeter um, above the baseline okay and then it ends with a positive t wave that we see here so that's type two now what differs in type two and three is simply how high above the baseline that terminal st segment elevation is in type two we said it has to be at least one millimeter okay in type three it's actually less than one millimeter okay so not less than or equal to let me erase that but less than one millimeter and what that means is imagine this we'll make it in purple that means that if you have this as the st segment so imagine it coming down it's going to drop below but not to the baseline and then come up okay so if i draw it again sorry for the drawing but here it comes down doesn't go beyond that baseline so it doesn't cross it now if i draw a baseline here just to show you okay here's our j point that saddleback morphology and notice that it actually goes if this was one millimeter here it dips below okay and then goes up into a positive uh, t wave so hopefully that makes sense as you can see type 2 and 3 have that same morphology the only difference is that terminal portion of the st segment of how low it actually goes if you have that negative t wave and cove type morphology that's the type 1 okay and so let's look at what we have here okay so in this case notice that in v1 here's v2 and v3 okay let's look at v2 how about that okay so notice that you have the st segment comes up it comes down drops below the baseline imagine our baselines here into that negative t wave so this is actually a type one 
So this is Brugada syndrome or the pattern type one. We usually consider things that are syndromes as things that have clinical um, manifestations, okay, or symptoms, or are associated with sudden cardiac death, okay. So that's uh, one thing to note. And what I want to, I, why this is an important pattern to recognize is because Brugada syndrome has been identified as a cause of sudden cardiac death in even structurally normal hearts, okay. So young people, we want to even be aware of this pattern, okay, because they are at risk for sudden cardiac death. And these mutations have to do with this SCN5A gene, which is a loss of function of a cardiac sodium channels, okay? And this could be actually found in up to one-fourth of families with Brugada syndrome, this type of mutation. So again, if you see this, it's helpful because screening, not only for the patient, but sometimes even for the family for any genetic mutations may be helpful. All right, so let's just recap what we looked at here. So Brugada syndrome, it's a form of pseudo right bundle branch block with the ST segment elevation in those right precordial leads V1 through V3. We saw all of them have that J point elevation of at least two millimeters, okay? The other thing you want to note here is in type one, we have that cove type, which differs from the others that have the saddle back morphology. Okay, it has that descending terminal ST elevation and it has that negative T wave. So that's another thing to look out for. Negative T wave suggests type one because the others had positive T waves. Okay, so that's one thing to differentiate in. Now, how do we differentiate uh, type two from type three? Well, it has to do with this portion C. Okay, in type two, the elevation, that terminal portion, was above one millimeter, okay? In type one, it's less than one millimeter, okay? So if you want to review these, all you have to do is look at these types. So I'll erase some of this here, and you can look at them, okay? Go through them. You can pause the video. I've drawn them all out to help uh, make sense of them, okay? And hopefully it makes sense that the EKG we're looking at here is a type one. Again, we're looking for that pseudo right bundle branch block with the SD segment elevation and how we differentiate the others are the characteristic findings in the morphology of the SD segment, how low or high it is at the terminal portion of the SD segment, whether it dips below the baseline and whether the T wave is positive or negative. Okay, so one thing to look out for, um, this is something that you should be aware of and one that you want to not miss. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? 
Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on. Okay. And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay. This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay? Why we developed this, okay? A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.